Welcome back to another video and in today's episode we will be snapping our walls and we're gonna have quite a few different walls. So we're gonna have our foundation, we'll be, we will be able to snap walls to it. So we have three types of walls right now and the same thing will work for our floor as well. We can have some walls like this if we want and it's going to be pretty cool. So let's go ahead and let's get started. So the first thing that I'm going to do is go ahead and check out my assets. Now, by default, they don't have the greatest collisions. Now, when you will have those, you will have some great collisions. If you are using my assets, if you are not using those, well, then you will have to do these steps same as I do. Now, if we open up the mesh, select the collision and click show simple collision, you will see that this shows us a whole huge cube around our mesh now that means that we are not able to walk through that now we can test that by placing this in the world hitting play and there we go we cannot really walk through this so let's open up our mesh and let's create our own collision so i'm not going to use the complex collision because i want this to have physics later on and be destructible so there's going to be no uh, no complex collisions so what I'm going to do is hit this collisions, remove collision, hit collision once more and add a box collision. Now this will create us just a regular box. So we get the same result as we just did. But the difference is we can select this. So if we click aside, it's going to be dark green. If you select it, it's going to be light green and we can scale this up and move around. So what I'm going to do now is go to the collision settings, primitives, boxes, array element zero and here are the properties for it so what i'm going to do is let's move this back i'm going to scale this down a little bit move this aside like this and i'm going to try to hit the correct numbers so this is the x extent so let's say this is like 140 and also i'm going to change this grid snapping so this needs to be even less so like 135 perhaps so this is really good and so what I'm going to do is make sure I'm selecting this and hit Control W and it's going to duplicate this and it's going to create another one. So I'm going to try to align this roughly the same, roughly the same, not in the X axis though but in the Y and Z. There we go and simply now move this to the other side and place it right here. There we go. So we have this thing set up. Try to align this as good as you can. It's the, the, the better you align this, the better you will be with the collisions. So now that we have done this, we need another one. So again, Control W. I'm going to align this once more. And place it down. There we go. So that seems nearly good. There we go. There we go. Place it in the middle. Scale this down in the Z because we don't need such a big chunk up here. And let's make this a little bit bigger. So like 150 perhaps, a little bit too much. Let's make this like 140. Now I said to try to align this as good as possible. Now make sure that it doesn't extend above the meshes limits so what i mean by that is make sure it is a little bit even maybe smaller otherwise it's going to give us issues later on when we're trying to detect uh, whether it is overlapping something or not so it might give us issues later on but i'm going to speak about that topic later on as well so don't worry if you miss that but uh, yeah make sure it doesn't extend over the object too much for me as you can see it's not even entirely across the whole object so this is good enough for now so i'm gonna save this and i'm gonna do the same thing for the window and i'll be back in a sec there we go now these sides i made uh, a little bit bigger on purpose so don't worry about this if they like overlap one another that's just fine just make sure that they do not overlap anything else that could be in the world so uh, that's it. So the assets are ready to go. So now let's go ahead and let's add these two as well to our database. So inside of our buildings, uh, buildables database, I'm going to duplicate the wall twice and I'm going to call this wall door and also the wall window. Now let's change the meshes to wall, wall door 
and we have the wall window. Now, all of these are going to use the same trace channel. It's going to use the build trace and all of them are going to use the same actor as well. We're going to use the build wall for this. Now, if we would directly try this out, hit B, you will see we have these walls, but if we place those down, it's going to place us down the regular walls because it's using the same actor and it doesn't yet know how to make the necessary adjustments that it needs. So let's go ahead and let's teach it how to do that. Let's open up our build interface first so that it's easier for us to interact with these objects. And we're going to do a similar thing for other objects later on. And let's go ahead. So create a new function. So add new function. And let's call this set mesh. And all it needs is a single input, which is a mesh. I'm going to call this mesh and it needs to be a static mesh. That's it. So we compile and save this. Now, if we go to our buildables, build wall, you will see that now under the, oh, we don't have an interface added to this. So let's make sure that we open up our class settings and add a build interface. And now that we have added that one, we have the return boxes from the previous video and we have this set mesh. Now we can double click the return boxes. That is a actual function. This is an event. So the functions are blue, events are yellow. Uh, that is because, well, we do not have any outputs. We don't need any outputs for this one. So I just made this into an event. You can also make that into a function as well if you like, but I don't need any outputs for this. So to access that simply in the event graph, let's look for event set mesh. And what we want to do is bring in our static mesh component and we want to set the static mesh. That's it. As simple as that. Plug that in and there we go. Now we need to run this set mesh in our uh, building. So let's go ahead, open up our build component, event graph, and where we have the spawn build. There we go, we have the spawn build, not in the event graph, it's just spawn build. And what we can do over here then is from the return value, we can set static. Uh, that's interesting. Oh, just set mesh, that's what I called it. So we can set mesh message. And we need to provide the mesh and we can grab the mesh from our buildables database like so so there we go we have done that and now if we try this again you will see that nothing works and as soon as we close that we get an error so how do we fix this well it's calling set static mesh on something pers persistent level blah 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 but mobility is static. So if the object is a static, like as hard as a rock, we cannot do anything with it. We cannot move it. We cannot change it. We can't do anything. So what we must do, if we want to change the mesh, we got to select this component that we are changing the mesh for, and we got to change its mobility to movable. And now it's actually going to do something. There we go. So this is pretty cool. We can actually walk through that as well. Uh, can we jump through this? Yeah, we can jump through that as well. There we go. So that's cool. Now let's make sure that we can actually stack these on top of our uh, or on top of our foundation. So let's open up our buildables, build foundation, and we need to add a bunch of more boxes to this. Now what I'm going to do is actually select all of these. Hit F2. Uh, it doesn't work that way. Okay, let's rename one by one. So I'm going to call this uh, foundation. Uh, let's just call this foundation and actually let's just call this foundation one i'm going to copy this and i'm going to paste this over so i'm going to call this foundation two foundation three and foundation four so that later on it is easier for us to know which ones are which and we don't need to do anything else everywhere else is going to be renamed on its own so now we need to add even more box collisions to know where to place the walls so i'm going to call this wall one so with the walls it's a little bit different now we got to make sure that again, we uh, obey the rules of the locations. We got to place the box exactly where the wall should be placed. So since this is 400 units, I already know that I need to build it on side. So from the middle, halfway through, it's going to be 200 because 400 divided by two is four, uh, 200. So I'm going to move this to minus 200 and I'm going to move this up to match with this one. So let's have a look. When does it match? 
looks like 113 is the one that matches uh, maybe 114 no 113 is the one there we go so this is the position let's duplicate that wall number two goes to 200 uh, in the x wall number three zero x 200 in the y and the fourth one is minus 200 y so now what we need to do is actually we will need to rotate these quite a bit so but before we do that let's go ahead let's extend this in the z axis to something like 200 perhaps so that's quite easy for us to detect this now it's going to go down yes but it has to or we have no other options really it has to be the way it is and then we need to extend one of these but if we do that you will see that well they all are extending this way now that is actually pretty good uh we need to extend this 200 to match the same size so you can see these two are matching up nicely but these two are not so you would think extend them in the y-axis instead no because we need the correct rotations so these ones now need to be rotated so that it would retrieve the world rotation and give it well tell us what what it is so i'm going to grab this and rotate this 90 degrees this way i'm going to grab this one and rotate this 90 degrees the other way now if you if for your meshes it matters in which way it is then maybe you need to rotate this later on like the 180 degrees more uh, but for my meshes i think it will not really matter so now we have our walls so let's make sure we select all of our walls go down till the collision presets change that to custom and in this situation again we want to ignore everything except for the wall trace now we want to block the world wall trace because we are building walls over here and also in the return boxes we got to return those so we need to add four more of these so i'm going to adjust this a little bit bring these four in there we go and we have four more boxes and now since all of the logic is already created we just simply added a couple of more uh, box collisions that are getting detected with the wall wall trace it's going to work just fine so now on top of our foundation we should be able to snap our walls so if we change this to wall you can see it is snapping to those positions and it's going to work for all of them so we have this one this one this one and it is working the way it should so now let's do the same thing for our uh, for our floor so let's go ahead let's open up our build floor and i'm going to be a little bit lazy i don't want to copy and paste uh, well recreate everything so i'm just going to copy and paste so i'm going to select the wall one hit ctrl c click a couple of times over here paste it in now i don't copy all of them in because then the hierarchy changes and they're a little bit messed up so that's not what i'm going to do uh, but i'm going to select one by one and copy those over and then if i copy this one by one then the locations are going to be fine there's going to be no hierarchy and it's just going to be fine just make sure you click over here so it doesn't select anything and then you paste it in now by default though the location of the the location in the z-axis is going to be off it's going to be at 113 which is made for the foundation so go ahead and bring this down to whatever level it has to be and in my situation it looks like it's two we could bring this to even to zero it's totally up to you i'm going to leave it at two uh, maybe if there's some small small holes then maybe bring this down just a little bit but i'm going to leave it at two so uh, it already has the same collision rules except for these ones are blocking the other traces as well which is strange uh they didn't copy the correct rules so let's go ahead let's ignore everything except for the walls let me double check if these are correct so these are correct so these now are correct okay and we need to return them as well so four more entries four more collision boxes plug those in there we go compile and save this so now let's hit play and let's have a look so we snap 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 boom boom whoops that's not what i wanted to build but you get the point now it is snapping to all of those locations that it has around it so that's going to be it for today's video if you enjoyed it make sure to subscribe to not miss another episode and uh yeah thank you for watching and i see you in the next one